morning, my friends. Welcome to our first session of STEAM for the 2021 year. We welcome all families and friends uh, back to joining us, and I hope that you all had a safe and healthy holiday season. So yes, welcome to our first session of STEAM for January 2021. Today we're going to be making a fun science experiment and that is an ice balloon snowman that I have right over here. Now, the things that you're going to need are a few items. Of course, you're going to need adult supervision. You're also going to need a few balloons. Now, this science experiment calls for three balloons for the snowman's uh, base. However, I suggest if you're able to, to have about six balloons. Um, what I ended up doing was I tried this experiment in advance and I'm glad that I was able to freeze six balloons because it is trial and error and problem solving and some of the frozen balloons did work out and some of them did not. So if you do have some room uh, in your place to be able to freeze uh, six balloons as opposed to three that is great but if you can only freeze the three balloons that's perfectly fine as well I also found that you can also make the snowman with just two balloons if you like um, especially if you have smaller hands you're able to make the snowman balls as big or small as you like so you need the balloons you will need uh, some scissors again with adult supervision. You're going to need about a pinch of salt. You're also going to need some water, which I have here in a cup. But uh, for this experiment, you can definitely do this over the sink. You will also need a piece of paper and some writing tools, whether that be pencil or a crayon or a marker, whatever it works best with your child. And also I recommend having somewhat of a bin. I have a big plastic bin here, and that is just to uh, hold the ice snowman in after it is frozen, and that is to uh, hold any of the water that is melting. So um, the first step you're going to do is you're going to take your balloons now, um, as I had suggested, it, this is probably best to do over the sink. So you're going to have your adult help you put the balloon um, and connect it to the sink faucet. And you're going to get a good amount of water in there that's going to create a ball. Now, this is the about the size that I had made uh, my ice balls. Just like that, a closer look. And if you're able to, you would like to make one that is small size, a second one that is medium size, and a third one that is a larger size that is going to be your snowman's body. And again, as I had mentioned previously, if you do have smaller hands, like toddler ha size hands, you can definitely make them a mini ball size if you like, if that helps as well. So after you put the water in, you're going to have your adult secure the top and put a knot in. Then after you have your three balls, or if you decide to do six balls, you're going to place them in the freezer. Now, uh, depending on uh, what the weather is at the moment, I've seen instances where uh, people have put their uh, balloons outside in the snow to freeze overnight. Now, right now, because uh, we don't have too much snow outside at the moment, I was able to put it in the freezer, but I do think it's a lot of fun if the children are able to see the balloons freeze outside. And I do recommend the best is to freeze your balloons uh, overnight. That's the best way to uh, make sure that it's nice and solid. When I did freeze these balloons in the freezer, I did check after about four hours, and I did find that there were still some spots that were not totally frozen. So overnight is the best case scenario for this. So you're going to freeze your balloons, and after, Let's say the next day when you take out your balloons from either outside or the freezer, it's going to look like this. It's going to be super cold, so you want to make sure that you have your adult helping you hold on to that balloon. Now, the next thing you're going to do with your frozen balloons is you're going to carefully peel away the balloon pieces from the now frozen balloon. And so how you're going to do that is you're going to have an adult 
slip, snip off the top from the balloon and that's going to create an area where you're able to peel. So I'm going to start peeling this and the children can definitely help um, the adult of the house. Um, maybe you can start it off and then they can go ahead and help peel the rest off. And this in itself is just a really fun and neat thing for the kids to see. They're gonna be in awe of how cool that is to have the frozen snowball. So you're gonna end up with three of these for your snowball base, snowman base, I'm sorry. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pick your biggest ice ball and you're going to put that in your bin that you want to um, catch the water. Now, if you end up doing this outside and it's cold enough, you can definitely just put it on the cement ground. And so what I suggest, this is where you're going to have your uh, salt handy. So in order to secure your snowball onto either your bin or onto your cement is you're going to want to get your salt. So you just need about a pinch of salt and you're going to put that, um, just for the sake of the um, explanation, you're gonna put that into your bin. You're going to spread that a little bit around into your bin and then you're going to place your first snowman um, body, like the largest one. You're going to put that onto the bottom of your bin, or again, if you're doing this outside, you're gonna do it um, on the cement. So what the salt does is it helps adhere the ice snowman ball to stick. So you're going to do the same thing with your two other ice balls. So I'm just going to get the other one here. So this is the second one. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have an adult cut the top off and peel it off. And with a pinch of salt, when this is already on your base of your bin, you're going to put a pinch of salt, rub it in here, have the kids rub it in, and then you're going to place your other peeled ball. So we're just gonna imagine that this is peeled. And you're going to place it on top, okay? So you're going to continue with that until you have all three ice balls on top of each other. Then once you have your snowman base, it's gonna look a little bit like this, but look, we have a face on there. And that is where the felt comes in. If you do not have felt, you can try different tools that you have at home. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second on how you can expand this activity. So if you do happen to have some felt, have the children uh, draw with a marker um, a carrot head. You can draw with your black felt. My black felt just fell over here. Um, and then they can cut out the circles for the eyes. And again, when they are putting it on the snowman, just put a, have them put a little touch of salt and that really helps it stick on to the snowman and to make it fun and to have your children be able to play with this for a longer time. Maybe have them cut out different uh, things to put on the snowman. They can make a hat for it. They can make a scarf. If you have anything at home that you think that you can stick on to your snowman, you can go ahead and do that. And so on to the science part of this. So today we're going to make a hypothesis. Now you might be wondering, what is a hypothesis? Well, a hypothesis is an educated guess based on the information you already have. So with your children, have them learn what a hypothesis is. What they will need is their piece of paper and a writing tool, and they can go ahead and write down a hypothesis, and you can ask the questions to them, what do you think is going to happen to the snowman if we keep it inside? You can also make a hypothesis on what do you think will happen if we keep the snowman outside? And what do you think is going to happen after the snowman is inside or outside after one hour, after two hours, 
or three hours. Now, if your children are small and unable to write or spell at the moment, that is totally okay. You can teach them how to make a hypothesis by drawing out what they think might happen. Now, on mine, I just put my hypothesis and I drew my little snowman and I put that I think my snowman is going to melt faster inside than outside. And you can ask your children the same thing. So they can do the same thing on their piece of paper and you can help them write out indoor or outdoors. And again, of course, I know children are so creative in their ways. Give them a pencil, let them observe, let them um, talk about what their guesses are and have them draw it or write it in their own writing, just like that so they can observe. So. Now, the reason why this is a great science experiment for your child is because no matter what, they're going to be having fun just touching their ice snowman. They're gonna be in awe as to how the their balloons had froze. And also, they're going to be learning different things such as concepts of observation, problem solving, and they're also going to be learning about prediction. Not only that, but your little ones are going to be using their senses by touching, feeling, they can smell it if there's any kind of smell. You can talk about what it feels like. Does it feel cold? Does it feel slippery? And let them communicate to you what they, um, what they observe of their snowman. Now, some ways that you can uh, expand on this activity after you've done your hypothesis is you can bring out some tools that the, can, they can go ahead and uh, play with their snowman. If you have some paint, it's a fun way to use your paint with some paint brushes and get the kids to paint this ice snowman. If you have some food coloring, the same thing. All you have to do is put a few drops of food coloring into some water. And if you happen to have a spray bottle, they can spray it on. Or again, they can use paint brushes. If you don't have paint brushes, my go-to tool is always Q-tips. Those are great for little hands to use. And it also is having them um, use use and practice with their pincer grip. So while you're waiting for your hypothesis, you can definitely do these fun activities. And after you've had your hypothesis solved, so I'm gonna give a little tidbit for the parents. I did find that it did start melting after an hour. As you can see, I've had to uh, prop it up a little bit. But if your little snowman melts off and the head happens to fall off, which that happens to me, you can just put a little bit more salt, have the kids do that, and you guys can talk about what is happening to the size of the snowman. If you have a ruler or a measuring tape, it's a great opportunity for you to talk about numbers and measuring your snowman. How tall was your snowman when you first started? And then after an hour, you can check to find out how tall your snowman is now. This is such a fun opportunity to get your kids interested in the season of winter, even when there is no snow outside. This is a fun and simple activity uh, that you can do simply with balloons and water. And I hope you guys try this out today. If you guys have tried out a version of an ice snowman or other types of activities where you are freezing water and ice, let us know in the comments down below. You've also probably seen us where we've frozen um, ice with uh, toys inside. That's also a fun activity that you can do with this ice snowman. In advance, you can have your kids put little things into the balloons. You can put feathers, you can put glitter, you can put sparkle, and you can imagine what it's going to look like when it comes out. So there's so many different things that you can do with this science experiment. There's so much problem solving. And after your children have been able to see what happened to their hypothesis, Teach them that there are never any right or wrong answers when it comes to exploring with science. So I hope you enjoyed this activity and I hope to see you again next Friday. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.